Story Recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a horror and sci-fi film called Harbinger Down. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. In 1982, a Soviet lunar lander crashed into the Bering Sea. Meanwhile, in the present, biology students Sadie and Rennell join their professor Stephen on a tour to learn about the effects of global warming on a pod of whales. Ronell makes sure to record everything and eventually, they reach Alaska. Aboard the fishing trawler, Harbinger, Ronell, Sadie, and Stephen meet the crew. Sadie introduces herself to Bowman and Doc tells them his name. At the same time, Svet gets into a small argument with Doc, accusing him of putting a fish in her locker. However, Doc says he's not responsible for it and causes Svet to take out her knife. So Guillaume steps in before they fight. Seconds later, Sadie's grandfather Graf shows up and tells Svet he'll gut her the next time she pulls out a knife on his ship. He then hugs his granddaughter, who introduces him to Ronell and Stephen. After that, Sadie informs everyone they're tracking a pod of beluga whales that have been tagged with GPS devices. She says the breaking of the ice caps has affected the animals' migratory patterns. But Doc interrupts her and wants to know if they're getting paid for doing all that. However, when Sadie explains they're doing the research for their degrees, Doc simply mocks her. It isn't long before Ronell gets pissed at Doc and calls him out, but Grant tells them to knock it off and mind each other's business. Graf says the crew will work at night while Sadie and her group can conduct their research during the day, also reminding them the weather is about to get worse. Afterward, Guillaume and Bowman take Sadie and Ronell to the old radio room. There, Sadie shows Bowman a portable molecular analyzer, and Ronell tells him how to use it. Sad to say, another crew member, Atka, doesn't find it interesting and instead makes fun of it, so Ronell just tells them to go. As he's about to leave, Bowman asks Sadie if they're only tracking whales. Ronell then says he's correct, adding that they want to collect a sample to see how climate change affects the whales' migration pattern and their biology. Sadie also shows Bowman some visual aids to make him see where the whales are, but Graf soon calls his granddaughter to the wheelhouse. Moments later, Sadie tells her grandfather it's strange to be back there. Graf then points out to Sadie that her parents love the ocean as much as he does, asking the girl to take the wheel. But Sadie politely refuses, saying she'll try to get some rest, so Graf tells her not to let fear hold her down. As the night deepens, the crew gets to work and catches crabs. Meanwhile, Sadie struggles to sleep and decides to track the whales before waking Ronell up. She then takes their equipment and sets it up outside, submerging the camera into the water. As Sadie watches the footage on her tablet, she sees a pod of beluga whales and also notices something buried in the ice. Curious, she shows it to Graf and asks for his help to check it out, so the old man's crew takes it from the water. Once everyone is on deck, Sadie asks the crew to turn off the lights and get a spot on the ice. Then, they finally break the ice as Ronell records Stephen, who describes what the crew is doing. Soon, they realize that they've found a Soviet spacecraft with a cosmonaut, so Graf suggests turning it over to the authorities. However, Stephen says it's now the property of their university, and when Graf tells him the Russians will want it back, the professor reminds him the Soviet Union no longer exists. Sadie then backs up Stephen and mentions the salvage law, making Graf point out that the spacecraft's new owner is his granddaughter. At the same time, Graf makes it clear that everything on Harbinger is under his control. He says nobody will touch the spacecraft until they reach the Dutch harbor, leaving Stephen speechless. Later that night, Graf informs a crew member, Roland, that the storm is headed their way. Graf also adds that they must wait it out in the shallows, so Roland turns off the engine. Later on, Bowman and Atka ice the crabs in the hold as Doc examines the spacecraft. Then, Graf informs the Dutch harbor that they've dredged a piece of wreckage with human remains. However, he clarifies he's not signaling a mayday. Concurrently, Stephen talks to Sadie about the spacecraft and says Graf can't simply assign its ownership to her. Of course, he reminds Sadie it won't look good for her at the university to countermand his authority or their expedition. But their conversation gets interrupted when Bowman shows up. Bowman wants to know Sadie's theories as to what brought the ship down, only to be annoyed when Stephen refuses to leave them alone to talk. Stephen says he's excited that Sadie Sadie found the spacecraft, but he adds that she needs his help to properly manage it. When Stephen turns his back on them, Bowman tells Sadie the professor plans to cut her out and that the salvage rights are hers. He also asks Guillaume to distract Stephen, allowing Sadie to leave and talk to Svet. The women go to the hold to examine the spacecraft, and upon reading the writings on it, Svet tells Sadie it's a Soviet lunar lander. Curious, Sadie removes the cosmonaut's helmet and realizes he didn't burn to death. She also opens the man's suit and takes a sample of his flesh, and Svet notices something inside the lander. Svet reads a word she thinks translates to water bear, but Sadie doesn't want to check it and says they should go. Meanwhile, Stephen finally realizes what Guillaume is doing and walks out, seeing Sadie with Svet. Then, Bowman follows Sadie to the radio room, so Stephen quietly walks behind them and listens to their conversation. Stephen learns that Sadie examined the cosmonaut and hears her talking to Bowman about a tardigrade. 
also known as a water bear, prompting him to go to the hold. Stephen inspects the lunar lander and gets pissed because Sadie checked it before him. Still, he takes photos of the cosmonaut, unaware that something's moving on the spaceman's body. At the same time, Sadie analyzes the skin sample she took and discovers the cosmonaut's body is riddled with tardigrades. In the engine room, a sleeping Roland wakes up after hearing something and looks around, finding a moving slimy blob. Unfortunately, the unknown mass attacks him using its tentacles and crushes his head. In the wheelhouse, Sadie tells Graf about the tardigrades but assures him they're dead. However, Graf isn't happy to learn that they're rotting, saying their crabs will go to waste if the lunar lander or tardigrades are toxic. Also, he decides to head back to the Dutch harbor as soon as the water breaks. Upon hearing this, Stefan tells Graf it's the first order he's given that makes sense. Irritated, Graf asks him to leave, but Stefan threatens to file a lawsuit since Sadie exposed them to biohazards by opening the lander. Then, he advises Sadie to sign over the claim to him so he'll keep his mouth shut about her indiscretion. Defeated, Sadie gives in, and the professor tells them to wrap up his find for safekeeping. In the radio room, Renell covers Vet's scar with makeup. Renell is curious about how the Russian woman got her scar, and she is shocked to learn it's from a bad breakup. Renell also asks if the guy was caught, and Svet nonchalantly says the cops found most of him. Moments later, Stephen accuses Sadie of throwing the cosmonaut overboard when they realize the body is missing. Sadie immediately denies it, but Stephen doesn't believe her and even says she asked Bowman for help. Fed up, Graf twists Stephen's arm and threatens to bite his nose off if he throws another tantrum. Afterward, Graf informs everyone that the cosmonaut is gone, but Stephen suddenly feels unwell and leaves. Seeing that, Sadie follows the professor, who's starting to show signs of infection. Sadie immediately tells her grandfather about it, and when they go to check on Stephen, they find the man with no shirt on and thrashing around. Wasting no time, they take Stephen inside to tend to him, only to witness him grow stalks from his back. Everything descends into chaos as dark liquid spouts from the stalks, and some of it gets into Doc's mouth. Then, Stephen finally dies, and the liquid moves and heads down the drain. At the same time, Sadie sees a small bit of the liquid about to escape, so she immediately catches it. Because of what happened, the group freezes Stephen's body using liquid nitrogen, including the specimen. Sadie says there might be an organism on board, and when she admits she isn't sure what it did to Stephen, Doc gets mad at her for bringing the lander on the ship. To make things worse, Sadie tells them they've been exposed, so Graf decides to head to the harbor despite the weather to get medical attention. With Ronell's help, Sadie examines the specimen and realizes the tardigrades are still alive. However, Ronell wonders why they need to generate much heat, leading Sadie to think they need to kill the host's brain. Sadie also checks if they have a threat response, learning that they become solid when linked and act as a liquid when unlinked. Sadie then says that kind of energy needs a food source, but they get distracted when the molecular analyzer blinks. The analyzer shows the DNA of more than one species, so Sadie points out that seawater carries the DNA of everything that lives and dies in it. Also, she says the tardigrades have absorbed the genetic codes of hundreds of species. As if that isn't enough, Ronell states they can replace the host's blood, muscles, and skeleton since they can be liquid or solid. Meanwhile, Graf and Atka look for Roland and find the cosmonaut's body instead. An enormous tardigrade releases it before coming at Atka, who accidentally drops the liquid nitrogen. Then, Graf tries to help Atka, but the crew member gets his arm severed. With no other choice, Graf flees and informs Sadie, Ronell, and Guillaume of what happened. In the hold, Graf gives Atka's necklace to Bowman and says the organism is big and strong enough to bend their drive shaft. Sadie then reveals it will only get bigger since it can take whatever form it wants, and they realize how smart the tardigrade is when it cuts the ship's power. Luckily, they have battery backup, but it will only last a couple of hours. Afterward, they put the liquid nitrogen in a pressurized scuba tank. Bowman, Sadie, Guillaume and Graf also immediately head to the engine room to freeze the tardigrade, and once they succeed, they go on deck to see why Ronell is shouting. There, they find Svet preparing to burn Doc in a cage, saying she's sure the guy is infected since he's sweating. Svet has no problem threatening Bowman with a knife when he tries to stop her, and Doc can only beg for his life. Svet apologizes to Guillaume since Doc is his friend and proceeds to point the flare gun at Doc, but the men subdue her and take her weapon. Unfortunately, Doc grows Doc's too, so Svet takes that as a cue to shoot and burn him. Then, Graf returns Svet's knife and they all go back inside. Curious about Svet, Sadie takes the woman's bag and confronts her in the hold, demanding to know what she's there for. Graf checks her bag and discovers she carries military communications gear, so Svet eventually admits she's a Russian agent. Svet then explains what happened to the lander, saying the Soviets tried and failed to create radiation-resistant cosmonauts. However, instead of risking an entire crew of a naval vessel, Russian agents or consultants pose as fishermen on trawlers to observe and advise. At that moment, Sadie realizes the Russians don't want the lander back, saying they'd rather have some small, unsuspecting fishing boat pick it up and find out how deadly the organism is. Of course, Guillaume gets mad and comes at Svet, but the agent stops him with a gun and says the submarine that's been tracking them will surface in 30 minutes to pick her up. 
Unfortunately, she also reveals that the explosives she planted will detonate after one hour. As Vet holds everyone captive, Graf lets Sadie know that her grandmother passed away three months ago. Graf says his late wife was terminally ill and didn't want him to tell anyone, and all the old man can do is apologize to his granddaughter. Then, Sadie and the others notice the tardigrade coming out of a pipe. So they distract Svet by asking her about the submarine. The agent remains clueless, and Graf makes her think they will rush her. Threatened, Svet gets up and points her gun at them, but she quickly shoots the tardigrade when she sees it. The tardigrade then knocks her gun away, and when Renell picks it up, the creature drags her into the pipe. Enraged, Guillaume punches Svet and stops her from escaping, asking where the explosives are. Defeated, Svet reveals there are two in the engine room, only to be dragged away by a mutating tardigrade before she can say where she hid the other charges. Bowman attempts to go after her, but the creature takes Svet into the vents. The group tries to find the hidden explosives as their time runs out, and after going through Svet's belongings, Bowman says the other four must be below the waterline. They then split into two groups to look for the charges, so Graf and Guillaume start in the engine room, where the old man finds one and realizes it's magnetic. Luckily, Graf manages to remove it, and he tells Guillaume they should go once he sees the other one. Sadly, they have no idea that Svet's body has started mutating. Moments later, Sadie goes into the bilge and finds the remaining explosives on the wall. Meanwhile, Bowman discovers their crabs are gone and quickly tells Sadie to get out of the bilge, but it dawns on Sadie that she's surrounded by the tardigrades. Despite that, she still continues to remove the explosives before finally getting out of there. Unfortunately, an enormous tardigrade bursts through the bilge, so Sadie attaches the charges to the liquid nitrogen tanks. The group flees as the creature goes after them, and even though Guillaume manages to trap it, Graf has already been infected. With no other options, Graf instructs Bowman to keep Sadie away from him before leaving. From the wheelhouse, Graf sends out a mayday and takes his wife's ashes on deck. With a heavy heart, Graf scatters the ashes into the water, and the others quietly watch him. Then, Graf orders Guillaume to fix the drive shaft before telling Bowman to keep the nitrogen liquid pointed at him. As Guillaume works on the drive shaft, he gets attacked by Svet's mutated body. The big guy tries to fight back and knocks the creature down, giving him time to get the drive shaft working. However, the tardigrade eventually impales Guillaume, and it isn't long before the explosives go off. After that, Bowman prepares to ice Graf and tells Sadie to pilot them out of there. But the tardigrade they tried to freeze is still alive and impales Bowman, so Graf takes the liquid nitrogen to fight off the creature. With little strength left, the old man instructs his granddaughter to ice the ship, and Sadie looks for a way to do that. Piloting Harbinger, Sadie steers the ship towards an iceberg before taking the portable radio and escaping through the window. The tardigrade then follows her and continues to grow bigger, but when Sadie sees the iceberg nearing, she immediately jumps off the ship. Luckily, Sadie lands on ice and watches Harbinger crash into the iceberg, and as if on cue, the Dutch Harbor Coast Guard contacts her via the radio. When the Coast Guard asks Sadie what the emergency is, she replies that Harbinger is down. Sadly, all Sadie can do now is wait for help, and soon, she hears a chopper approaching. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.